Today we're going to go over the basics of the Autodesk Inventor Professional Program. Uh, the start of it looks a bit like this. Uh, if you haven't gotten to it yet, uh, you have to go to Start, down here, the lower left corner, All Programs, Autodesk, and find Inventor Professional uh, 2011. Uh, once you're in it, it's going to look something like this. And notice, uh, it's just sort of blank. Uh, we have to start off with a new file. So to do that, you're going to go up to the top left, click New. And you have a bunch of options here for, for different file types that you could start. Uh, we're going to start off with a standard inventor part. And it says .ipt for inventor part file. There's different things too, like assemblies and drawings and, and things like that. For now, we're going to do standard IPT, and later on, uh, we'll look at some of those others. Uh, so we'll double-click the standard .ipt. It might take a second. And then in a moment, you should see sort of a grid paper, like a graph paper background show up. We'll just let it load for a second while it does its thing. It's a big program. There's a lot going on. It takes up a bunch of memory. So please be patient with it as it loads. Okay. Once it's loaded, it'll look something like this. Up at the top, we have what's called the ribbon. There's a bunch of different options up here. Uh, way up above, there's different sets of tools or different sets of options uh, that you could load up if you needed to. Uh, really, we're just going to stay with the basics uh, because we're just getting started. So right now we're in sketch mode. There's two main modes we're going to learn about. Uh, there's sketch mode where you can draw shapes, and, and then there's feature mode, which we'll get to in just a minute, where you can make those shapes 3D. For today, we'd like to start with a cube model, a cube uh, 3D part. Uh, so to do that, if we're going to make a cube, let's start first with a square. So up here towards the top left, we're going to find rectangle. If you hover over it, notice in here, it'll come up again, uh, we've got some help. So if you're wondering about a tool, Notice that when it hovered, it popped up again, and it shows you exactly how to use it. Two-point rectangle. Create a rectangle using two points for the diagonal corners. Specify the first point at the start of the rectangle. Specify the second point. So basically, we're going to click once, move the mouse, and click again. I'm going to click the rectangle tool. I'm in it. See, it's highlighted. I'll come over here. You can start it anywhere. But the way I learned it, and the way I stick with it, is notice in the middle you've got this little point. That's zero, zero, zero. They call that the origin. You might remember that from, from graphing in math class. Here, notice it turned green. That little dot in the middle turned green when I got on it. That green dot means, hey, there's something here. I can snap exactly to this spot uh, if you'd like me to. So right now that's going to say, right on the origin, bang, with the green dot, I'm going to start there. I'd like to, so I'm going to click it once. Now if I move, I have a, rectang a rectangle that follows me, this sort of square shape. Also, the width and height numbers are getting bigger or smaller as I move it around. So I can estimate about how big this is going to be. It doesn't really matter right now how big we make it. So just make it any size, roughly square. You'll click again, those numbers will disappear, and then you'll have this sort of roughly square shape. We want to make it a perfect square. So to do that, We'll go to the Dimension tool, click it, see it's highlighted, and the way to use this, we're going to have to click a couple times. Uh, first, we're going to have to click on the side that we want to dimension, the side that we want to get the length of. So I'm going to highlight this line here, I'm going to click it once, notice it turned dark blue, then I'm going to move my mouse. 
when I move the mouse, I've got a number that follows me right now. It looks like 0 0.760. So that is the length of the line, 0.76 inches. If I click again, it puts that number down. It doesn't follow my mouse anymore, right? That number has been placed down in the drawing. It says this is 0.76 inches, and the dimension is right there. It's not moving. If I click it again, I get a window that pops up that I can edit that dimension. So let's say I'd like this cube to be three inches on every side. So the first side here, let's make it three inches tall. I put in three, I'm gonna hit enter or click the green check. Now that change has sort of made it look way too tall. It went off the screen here, I can't see it anymore. Over here on the right, you've got an auto zoom tool. Uh, it's called Zoom All. If you click on it, it'll try to grab everything that you've drawn into the screen so it, so it fits perfectly, our little auto zoom. Uh, so I'd suggest you click that. And now we can dimension the next line. We've already got the height. We can now do the width. So I'm gonna do it on the top. You could get the width of the bottom. Either way, I'm gonna click it once, move the mouse. Notice the dimension is following the mouse. Click it a second time to place it. That one's 0.878. It doesn't really matter what it is because I'm gonna click it the third time. I want it to be a cube that's three inches all the way around. So I'm gonna change it to three. And hit the green check or click the enter key. Once again, I can auto zoom, get it in the middle if I'd like to. If you can see everything, that's not a big deal. And notice, I only, I'll go back to auto zoom there. I only dimensioned the height here and the width here. What about the right side for the height? Do I need to have a dimension there or the bottom? Why wouldn't I dimension? I could. I could click here and notice it's already three because it's a rectangle and on the rectangle the height is going to be the same on both sides. The width is going to be the same on both sides. So don't over dimension because if you do and you try to put an, an extra dimension in there uh, that inventor doesn't want you to put in, uh, you could get an error that looks something like this. And it says, oh, it's over constraining the sketch. Oh, no. There's too, too many rules here for me to follow. It already knew that it had to be three inches on both sides because it knows it's a rectangle. Um, so if you get something like that, don't worry too much. You're probably just putting in too many rules, too many dimensions. Okay. So that taken care of, we've got a square. It's three inches tall. It's three inches wide. There's nothing else we need to do in sketch mode before we can make this a cube. So we're going to go up to the top right. And there's a green check here that says finish sketch. It says under it, it exits the active environment and returns to the general working environment. Well, what does that mean? Basically for us right now, if we click finish sketch, it's going to take us out of sketch mode and put it into what we call feature mode or what, what might say up here model mode. Uh, think of it as 3D mode, right? So we've got this two-dimensional sketch. It's just this, this little thin little, little drawing here. Uh, but let's make it into our cube. And to do that, we're going to use a tool called Extrude. Uh, you probably already know something about Extrude. going to use a shape and if you look at the help here we're going to use a shape kind of like that star and then we're going to kind of push some material through it kind of like play-doh uh, where you're pushing some through a mold so hopefully you have the main idea of what extrude is going to be you're going to take that little little mold shape and you're going to push material through it that's exactly what we're going to do with the square so I'm going to click extrude and already I've got some options showing up, and it's showing me an example here. Uh, the only reason that it 
automatically showed me what it would look like right now is because there was only one thing that it could possibly extrude. If it was more complicated, you'd actually have had to do some other stuff. But for now, we've got a square. It's the only thing that could possibly be extruded. So it's already showing me if we extruded this one inch, this is what it would look like. To make it a cube, we want it to be three inches all the way around. So if you change yours to three inches, now it shows you what that'll look like. And I think that looks perfect. So we'll hit OK. And if we zoom all, you should see that you've got a pretty perfect cube here. If you want to check it, there's another view tool here called Free Orbit. And basically, you can click this. You'll get this little circle that shows up. If you click and drag inside, you can see all the different sides. You can move it around. And if you check it out, I think that's a pretty perfect cube. So I like that. I want to go back to the home view. Notice up here, you've got this little cube. Uh, you can click on any part of the cube, and it's kind of like the, the, the orbit tool. You can, you can move around and do stuff. But also, you've got this little house. It's the home view. And you can click on that, go right back to the home view, and you're back to where you started. So that's really handy. I like this. There's, there's one more thing I'd like to do. And that one thing is to change it from this boring gray to something else. Uh, so up at the way, way, way top, you'll see this, this little box called As Material. And you can click it. It might take a second because there's a bunch of things in there it has to load. But if you click it, you'll get a whole list of different materials or different finishes uh, that you could apply to that part. And some of them are really simple. Like here's one that just says brown. And it's just brown. But some of them are a little fancier. So maybe you want to click it again and find maybe like a wooden texture. So I'm going to scroll down a bit, down a bit. Down a bit. It's going really slow for me right now. Let's do burled oak. So now I've got a little fancier texture, and I could go into uh, my Orbit tool, check that out, and I think that looks actually really uh, pretty cool. Uh, maybe I'll do one other one, because I kind of want to show you a metallic one too. Uh, so if we go through and do a chrome, maybe. I like chrome. It's right up here, chrome. And apply that sort of shiny too. So you can play with it. I think for now, honestly, I'm going to go back to that burled oak. And I'm pretty happy with that model. There's my cube right there. Uh, I'd recommend at this point you save it. You probably would have been a good idea to save throughout as we get to more complicated models. Uh, you can do some saving as you go. Uh, each big step, I'd definitely save it. Uh, for you now, uh, if you haven't already, go up to iPro, go to Save or Save As, and make sure you call that something that makes sense, not just File 1 or something, call it Cube, uh, something like that. Once it's saved, though, I don't want you to turn it in uh, just as an inventor file. What I'd really like you to do is go back down to your snipping tool. And once you're in snipping tool, Grab a screenshot. Okay, clicking and dragging. You've got your window. Once you have your screenshot set, save that as a picture. Okay? And then turn it into me that way, please. Uh, I really don't want you to turn it in as an inventor file just because it takes forever to, to download them and open them and check them out. When it's a screenshot like that, it's going to be a lot faster. I can grade your stuff easier. Okay? Uh, so that's the basics for the first uh, inventor file that I'd like you guys to make. Uh, you'll turn out with a, with a cube just like that. And then for the next one, you'll be doing something a little more complicated. After that, you'll be doing something a little more complicated again. 
and we'll keep on going until you can do some, some pretty cool parts. Uh, if you had any trouble with this, please let me know. Uh, any questions or concerns, uh, please talk to me. Uh, otherwise, I uh, hope this wasn't so bad and that you kind of enjoyed it uh, for the first time making a 3D part inventor. Uh, and then tomorrow, uh, we'll start moving on to something a little more complicated.